Profile time. <gasps> For the last time this season, mm. as I throw my hands up in the air in disbelief. He did as well. Yeah. Uh, now then, oh, we've uh, we've already mentioned this man uh, in in the show, perhaps at the start. John Aldred, <laughs> Diego, um, Jack Warner. Akin. It's Edwin Van der Sar. Oh, oh, fitting. Apt, apt. apt yeah. indeed. Um, yeah, it's weird to think that that his career's finished. Yeah, yeah. isn't it? Absolutely. Especially as the player plays in such a huge game. Yeah. You think, well, hang on, they've, they've got a bit more in there. He can surely perform, yeah. yeah. He doesn't, again, as we, we've said, like, the past three weeks, he doesn't need to retire, but... It was, it was apparently sort of um, um and ahhing about retirement uh, uh, during, during the week before the Champions League final, but then Ferguson came out and said, Look, you know, he, he's definitely decided now. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, we've got plans in place for another keeper, don't... Uh, apparently he said that, you know, if... I, if he retired now he knew he'd be in the Demon Nuts Hall of Fame so yeah, <laughs> that, was, that was the clincher yeah. mm-hmm. well, United apparently agreed a deal for De Gea haven't they so yeah. Yeah. that's done and dusted now apparently. Um, did you know though he was born on the 29th of October 1970 I could oh, have guessed three years <laughs> three and a bit he's years. got that look hasn't he <laughs> excuse me oh, sorry, three, sorry. Three, three, three and a bit years after the summer of love right, you can carry on now yeah <laughs> dear oh dear did he save the sperm race or <laughs> really nice. Nice. Okay. He got a hand to it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Spermy hand. <laughs> Very good Not the start he was after. <laughs> Very good indeed. That, that leads me on neatly to say he was a late developer in the game. Um, relatively speaking, of course, uh, he started out playing for his um, his local club. Now, to cut a long story short, the manager, uh, the head coach of that team, he used to play cards with Louis Van Hal. <laughs> That's uh, an odd trivia. And yeah, uh, yeah. Van Hull, of course, was uh, assistant coach at Ajax at the time. Now, uh, during one card game, um, he mentioned that he needed a goalkeeper. So Van der Sar's coach offered the young Dutch keeper Go to fish. To lo- <laughs> 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 yeah. um, and after Van Hull saw him play, um, they got him to Ajax. Great stuff. When I first heard about this story, I thought, was he like, a, was he included in a bet or something? Yeah. I'll raise you my keeper. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Which I thought would have been. I, great. Li- I like the idea of you saying that he was uh, a late developer. In that, like, people criticise him for being too small because you always get that with like yeah. legendary footballers. He was too yeah. small, yeah. too yeah. skinny. Not Van der Sar, nearly six foot six. <laughs> Although he's quite, he's a very slim man. Yeah, he he is. too slim. T- really? <laughs> okay. No, we're gonna make well, it. We're not asking you to. Um, <laughs> Now, uh, Van Hal, of course, became the head coach of Ajax and went about turning Van der Sar into a sweeper keeper. I love that. Do you? One of the first keepers. Stop that. Um, (laughs) One of the very first sort of uh, goalkeepers with the. It was so comfortable with the ball at his feet that I can remember seeing when I was when I was a little bit young. Absolutely legendary legendary Ajax team as well. Yeah, he was. Yeah. Um, uh, No, you're you're right, Pete. It was it was the. I suppose it's that kind of. um, Total football ethos that, that runs through Dutch football's veins that uh, everyone's good with the ball and, and, and the keeper can come out. And, uh, but I do like a, a keeper playing as a sweeper as well. The I mean, high... It's ludicrous that, that keepers can't control the ball and pass the ball properly. It's no, a yeah. massive part of it, especially these days. Of course, yeah. Um, and he, when he joined Ajax, I think it was Stanley Menzo, I think was the uh, the keeper at the time. Mm. But uh, in his first full season um, as uh, Ajax's first choice keeper, he won the Dutch goalkeeper uh, of the season award, which is an incredible achievement. And then uh, he went on to win the UEFA Cup with Ajax And of course, as you said, look, he was a part of that great young Ajax team Who won the Champions League in 95, beating yeah. Milan in the final hmm. And what a win it was Patrick Cliver, I think, got the Very only fun. goal This is an amazing team Davids mm. They had like a 29-year-old Carno. Yeah <laughs> I like to think they'd all be de- decent in goal as well yeah. With the whole sort of Dutch total football thing Decent everywhere um, And that season he was crowned the best goalkeeper in Europe um, They got to the final a year later, losing to Juventus on penalties uh, speaking of penalties, should I yeah. say? Speaking of which, he once scored a penalty for Ajax. I think it was like something like an eight-one win, and he mm-hmm. went up the other end. Get him up there. Sent the keeper the wrong Take way. The <laughs> nice. nice. Thanks very much. But he didn't really celebrate. He, in true sort of Van der Sar fashion, he just ran up, tucked it away, and then ran off, back. Uh, yeah, he ran back. It doesn't make mm. a fuss. Well, I mean, no goalkeeper wants to see penalties go in. I guess. Yeah. Maybe yeah. he just hated himself for it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it would be, it would turned against his own kind. Yeah. Nightmare for the other goalkeeper. Imagine another yeah. goalkeeper scoring against well, you. Ricardo, yeah. Remember yeah. Ricardo in the Portugal England shootout? Yes. He took his gloves off, stuck one away, didn't he? Yeah, he yeah. did. Yeah. No. Yeah. And then obviously <laughs> Rog- Rogerio Saint- Senni and, um, yeah. and Sch- oh, we've talked about goal scoring keepers all the time. We Kevin Pressman. Pressman's mm. another one. Sheffield Wednesday, Schmeichel. 
Uh, did he take a penalty? No, but he, he scored goals. We're talking about penalties. Yeah. yeah. Specifically penalties here, Jim. Mm. All right, indeed. Um, <laughs> it, was a, it was around this time he played at Euro 96 uh, for the Dutch, and then a couple of years later, World Cup 98, when they went all the way to the semis, involved in that wonderful game against Argentina yeah, yeah. in the quarterfinals, where, uh, was it Ariel Ortega headbutted him on the chin? <laughs> Van der Sar went down and he got sent off. <laughs> but uh, oh, they were great Dutch sides mm. um, back then, more, more so in 98 than in. 96 now because of his appearance uh, I suppose his coolness and calmness um, and uh, I suppose he's quite normal he's not a crazy keeper no, no. Um, he has the uh, nickname in Holland the Ice Rabbit the Ice Rabbit <laughs> <laughs> disappointing he, he kind of looks a bit longer the Ice though. Giraffe Maybe. Giraffe. How gutted would you be? So we've got a nickname for you, right? <laughs> you're, you're cool under pressure. You're calm. You know you're. You ice know, man. Yeah, yeah, ice man. Yeah, yeah, yeah wicked, wicked. But like, like Val Kilmer in Top Gun, you know. Yeah. Ice rabbit. Ice what? <laughs> ice rabbit. Mm. Yeah. Dennis Bergkamp had the ice man, didn't he? Yeah, I suppose he already, he already had the squared away. Maybe yeah. they're all ice something. Pick another animal. There's loads. Oh, rabbit. Well, oh, rabbits yeah. do sort of leap around a bit, don't they? I suppose so, yes. yeah. Ice yeah. buffalo would be good. Ice yeah. cat. <laughs> he's not a buffalo, he's too skinny. No, I'm just saying, as a nickname. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right then. Uh, well, he stayed on at Ajax winning league titles and cups until he left in 99 to sign for Juventus. Mm. Not a good move for him, it, it turned did out. Not the best timer, did he? No. Mm. Culminating in them, them signing Buffon for about 48 million. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I bet he was 36. like, yeah, it was 32 million or something. Wasn't uh, it? Yeah, yeah, something like that. Well, they played in a very different way, of course, uh, and he wasn't used to this. And he was told that all this sort of sweeper business and playing the ball out. Mm. No, don't do that here. Mm. I'm, I'm not having a go at him because this is his profile entry and it's a positive thing, but I mean, they played a different way he's still just a keeper yeah yeah T- true but they they promised him I think that we're gonna in court, you know we like you the way you are you sign a player surely for the way he is yeah, yeah. of course yeah. And, they, and they said that to him and, they, and they, they kind of promised him this and that and one thing and another and when he turned up it was kind of like no you fit into our system sorry yeah. ice rabbit yeah. no <laughs> carrots for you <laughs> <laughs> but I th- yeah he didn't he didn't, didn't really adapt and uh, actually the Italian media kind of mocked him eventually calling him van der Gaulle Mm. Mm. Right. Well, that's, that's, that's where he resides, really. So I mean, it's not yeah. really a criticism. No, that's right. I think Ice Rabbit is more of a <laughs> <laughs> criticism. <That's his> nickname. <laughs> <laughs> However, later on in his career, during Euro 2008, he captain Holland to a three 0 win against Italy after he played yeah. superbly. Ah, yeah. thank you. One um, match. Ah. <laughs> and Buffon <laughs> apparently Buffon said to him after the game, "Edwin, you are the best goalkeeper in the world." Amazing. It's good coming from Buffon. That is. Yeah, you <laughs> take that. Yeah, you take that. Yeah, because it's probably a, him. Yeah, like being called a <laughs> genius. By Einstein. Yeah. Um, now, after Juventus, he went to Fulham. Uh, Seven mil, a lot of money. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think to be honest, he was happy to get away from yeah, Juventus yeah. by then. Um, he would have been paid quite handsomely. That wage. What, it was an incredible coup for Fulham. I know we mentioned oh, this recently. Yeah. That, yeah, that is absolutely brilliant. And he was there for a surprisingly long time. Four yeah. years. Hmm. Um, yeah, and of course, it, playing in the Premier League and all the rest of it, you know, so it's slightly surprising on one hand, but maybe not so on the other because he his stock wasn't uh, an all time high at the no, time. Yeah, good move by Fulham. Good, good, good gamble to see that he was decent. He was having a bit of a bad time and, make, and taking advantage of the situation, yeah. mm. you know. And Al Fired will do that. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then, of course, in 2005, he signed for Manchester United, which was uh, a match made in heaven. Mm. Uh, in 2007, 2008, he kept 24 clean sheets in all competitions. It's great. I said, you can't argue with that. You're not arguing with that, are you, Jim? No, it would be churlish too. Um, they won the ch- won the Champions League in 2008, where he was the hero in the penalty shootout. Didn't yeah. he? Didn't Arsenal try and sign him, but they decided against it? I think so. I yeah. don't know. In, the, in that penalty shootout, there's a really interesting uh, bit of footage of when Nelka takes his penalty yeah. and Van der Sar points in into one corner, as if to say, yeah. either to say, "I know you're going to do this," or ah, it. "What if you do that?" Yeah. It's really it, like, quite incredible mind game. Yeah, uh, the, yeah. I mean, some of the great keepers have done that in the past. I think Gordon Banks was it. Every now and then, would take his cap off and throw it into one of the corners or something. Hmm. Yeah, Just get people thinking. Yeah, get absolutely. Really worked. Well, you and remember and, um, was, it, was it Big Yens or Oliver Kahn that pulling out the um, the notes from his sock? It was Yens against, wasn't it? against yeah, it was Italy. Yens. Well, that's a bit uh, uh, Argentina. I think. It was. I was against Argentina. Sorry, I think that's a bit more. Measured though, that's that's research. That's not mind game. But, but what I mean is, even if he didn't have anything on it, if the strikers saw him looking at it, yeah. he'd still get in their head. Oh, I got, I'm not going to put it where I usually put it. Yeah, yeah, because you'd be thinking, wouldn't you? Mm. Kidology, isn't it? Isn't it always? <laughs> um, uh, and then, of course, he played at Euro 2008, where the Dutch reached the, the semis again, and he was in the team of the tournament. Hmm. He, had, he had a good time there. Um, in 2009-2010 uh, season, with 
whilst he was at Manchester United of course he broke the English Premier League record and I think it may even be a European record the longest amount of time without conceding a goal 1,311 minutes wow it's loads yeah it's literally a thousand minutes Richard <laughs> what do you think of that Pete well, it's a long time isn't it clearly I mean what do you already say <laughs> <laughs> you've played in goal you know how hard it is <laughs> I can't keep <laughs> two minutes <laughs> we, yeah, we should would you talk- be happy with a half <laughs> I'd be happy with a half yeah. <laughs> we, we, should, um, we should talk about the sort of keeper he was though very very good sh- shot stopper yeah. you know, commands his area very well mm. Mm. And, and like you say, the, probably the, the sort of the attribute that people respect the most um, from what I've read of people playing alongside him, mm. how cool, calm, and collected. Yeah, that's right. Absolutely, well, you're yeah. gonna, it's going to give you confidence knowing he's there behind you. Absolutely. You know, and just you, that's so important in a defence. Obviously, I know, I know he's, I know he's a giant man, but particularly good on high crosses. Mm. Yeah, because a low crosses mm. he can't really do much with, but yeah. the high crosses he would just be absolutely statuesque. Sure. Well, that was it. and he was of course really the replacement for Schmeichel mm. and they took a while to get that in they had various mm. uh, amounts of goalkeepers and none of them really fitted uh, a few had a, a few nice moments and whatnot. but really van der Sar was the one Long but he was very much. different to Schmeichel Schmeichel obviously shouting all the time and was a physically big presence but made sure everybody knew he was there whereas van der Sar as you say is kind of a little bit more subtle mm. but yet Equally, a very, very safe pair of hands. Well, he more he more sort of oozes confidence through his paws rather than he shouts at it. Yeah, exactly. The thing the thing about Van der Sar as well, and, and I know we said earlier he didn't have the greatest game in the Champions League final just recently, but there's one great shot of when Messi took a took a shot from outside the area, and the the, the camera shot was behind Messi, and Van der Sar wasn't even in the camera shot, and it was the ball was going to the far corner, and just from nowhere, Van der Sar extended both arms. Yeah, you know, I mean, if you think about it, he's six foot five, six foot six, with both his arms extended. You're talking about eight feet tall, you know, maybe yeah, longer yeah. than that. Just a full length and pushed it around the post, and it made it really brought home to me thinking, oh, it must be so difficult to score against a really top quality keeper because yeah. yeah. he, he makes himself so big. Indeed, he does. Um, uh, yeah, but it was the last game of his, his career, and it, it was quite sad for uh, a sour note for it to finish on. But he became the oldest player to have appeared in Champions League final at forty years old. I mean, that's mm. an incredible he's achievement. The, he's the oldest Premier League winner as well, isn't he? Is that right? Yeah. Blow me. I mean, but it's not. Uh, but it's not a case of you look at him and think, mm, a bit old. What was Ferguson no doing? No, no. He would have been stupid not to have played. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, which. Again, of course he would. On especially pa- if it was on the bench, to be yeah. fair. <laughs> Given how much on, he drinks. <laughs> but on paper, it's an incredible way to finish his career. Oh, yeah, but like what Jim said earlier about how confident you'd be as a defender having him behind you. I mean, how great is it as a manager? You haven't even got to think about your goalkeeping position. Yeah. It's down straight away. Look, 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 look what Wenger's gone through this season exactly. with goalkeepers. And Ferguson before as well, when trying to find Van der Sar. It's, it's, it's a huge thing, isn't it, like, to have like a trustworthy Bartes keeper. And stuff. It's just like, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Bartes just went from the sublime to the ridiculous. It's a bit yeah. of a go-man, it, it? it almost seemed like Bartes was signed because he was a character. Yeah, you know, Ferguson likes his very sort of you know. Bartes you know, was a great keeper. Character. You can't forget that Bartes was a brilliant goalkeeper, and he and he and he served. You know, he he served United well for a period, but he he didn't have that longevity perhaps that Van der Sar had. Mm. And and as when I mean he replaced Schmeichel, he replaced Schmeichel in the hearts of the the fans. I think mm. you know because as I say, yes, of course they had various other replacements and whatnot. But Van der Sar was the one who everyone kind of thought. That position, yeah, he's, he's yeah. cemented his place. Yeah, it? is what I'm saying. Um, 130 Dutch caps. Um, yeah. He retired a few years ago, didn't he? Too? <laughs> Perhaps I could have worded that better. Uh, yeah. International caps. <laughs> um, uh, the most cap player in in Holland's history. He retired in 2008, and he arguably could have carried on. Mm. Yeah. Well, yeah, he could have, mm. quite simply. Anyway, I shall leave the final words to the Dutch novelist and amateur goalkeeper Chris Kuhlemans, who said, Van der Sar is fundamentally different. He is very strong, but also very careful, serious and respectful towards the ball. He is not aggressive, he doesn't attack the ball like other goalkeepers. He cares about it. I love that. His <laughs> technique is sens- uh, sensitive, masterful. Some goalkeepers regard the ball as the enemy because he's trying to penetrate their sacred area, but Van der Sar seems to welcome the ball, regard it as his ally, his friend. <laughs> Marvellous <laughs> stuff. Oh, I'll wait to round off the season. Edwin <laughs> Van der Sar. Come on in, pal.